Welcome to the Dudes Abode. Today's going to be something different because everything we do is different. How many of you have seen this book right here? Well, <clears throat> it's something I worked up in the event that if I ever got a Nexus animated series, this will be ready to pass out to all the animators, all the layout guys, all the producers, the directors, even the guy who sweeps the floors. <clears throat> we're going to be looking into this book today. And we're going to be drawing four of the most popular characters in the Nexus Pantheon. Here's a glimpse of the book right here that I assembled with the help of the Nexus crew. Figure construction. Who can go wrong with that, right? Can you get any more simple than that? No. Um, what not to do. That's always a big one. That goes over well. Um, the difference in male and female heads. How to construct the heads, storyboards. Pretty cool, huh? These are some actual storyboards from the Johnny Quest show from 1964. You can see how loose they are because when everything is in house, you don't need to communicate to people who speak a different language. Interiors, believe me folks, everything is covered here. <clears throat> and now we get the Nexus himself. Tall lean male model type build. Always present, always present him as formidable, formidable and mysterious due to his incredible power. Well, that's no problem. I can do that. And so can you. Construction, figure construction, headshots, head turns, blah, blah, blah. Is there no end to it? No, apparently not. Gestures. This is something we're, this is something we're going to be looking at um, uh, today as we move forward with these, uh, these sample drawings here. There's Thunder Peel. Everyone loves Thunder Peel. Everyone loves a good blonde. And she is the prettiest girl in the world, except for Gino Ginelli that I married um, because I invented her. Here's Thunder Peel. Two different outfits. <clears throat> Everybody see that? Good. Um, women don't dress the same way every day, so they. They changed their outfits. So we have these basic two outfits that everyone everyone's going to be using to animate Thunder Peel. Head turns. Can't live without those. Expressions. Look at how happy she is. Look at how mad she is. Supporting characters. This is our lucky day. These are people that are going to be in the very first episode of Nexus. The Island Group, the Earth Group, the bad guys and more bad guys. This comes in later on in the story. Who knows Dave? Everyone loves Dave. This is Dave. Dave is a Thun. He comes from the planet Thun. And don't call him fat because he's not. How to, how to draw the Dave mannequin. All this stuff is so important. You guys work that are work in animation and really any artistic field know how important these, uh, uh, these gesture uh, mannequin drawings are. And it extends down to the head. These, are, these things are not easy to draw and that's why we always draw these up to uh, to help everyone who, who is going to be contributing to the show. And um, it takes a while to get to know these things, these, these characters. Um, I don't think they come out of somebody's pencil full-blown. So <clears throat> Judah Maccabee, the hammer, I call him Fred. You can call him Fred too. He's going to be another drawing that we're going to be doing today. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, you're not going to get a chance to see Joe Coy to Smooth Nine, the sex kitten. But here she is anyway. The next fourth character we're going to draw today is Creed. He's a goosey trained assassin. He's got four arms. Don't mess with him. So as we zoom in on that and get a good look at the, the characters I'll be drawing, <clears throat> I will temporarily put this aside, as in over here. And uh, I guess we can start with the, uh, why don't we just start with randomly cho uh, choosing one here. Let's, let's make this um, Judah Maccabee, the hammer. Fred to you, Fred to me. So I'm going to pin this up so everyone can see it really well. And I'm going to grab one of these uh, Derwent drawing pencils that you've seen me use the last couple of live streams. 
And uh, you, know, you can also see I'm working on specialized 12 field animation paper. This is a paper that they've been using for the last couple billion years until the computers took over. But I'm kind of an old fashioned guy and I'm kind of big on still working on paper the way I was trained. So let's do a drawing. <clears throat> let's do a drawing this way of Judah Maccabee. Um, I'm deciding whether I should do the um, the blue pencil part of it first or not. This is a blue pencil, but it's not a, a color erase pencil like we care, right? So basic forms, basic forms. Everyone in the business goes with basic forms. Now remember, you don't have to start with a head. There's nothing. There's no law that says you have to do that. And there's just some law that I don't know about. When I'm, when I'm drawing these characters, I'm thinking of the same things you'll hear over and over from animators, comic book artists, illustrators. And that is, you, uh, you, you, have to, you need to come to a point when you actually think of these things as dimensional, dimensional, round, in the round. This is only one view of, a, of an actual living being who has four different sides to him. Another mistake people make when they're drawing this character, when I'm not around to monitor him, is that he's an ape. He doesn't have human proportions, he's an ape. So what I'm trying to do now is do the gesture and the mannequin at the same time. So, gorillas have long waists, short legs. I want to make that joke about the Fred flying in from the airport and how tired his arms are, but I think you've uh, you've already we've exhausted that one already. So there's there's the gesture, guys. Now to make it more visible, and to taint, and to entertain you even further, I think I'm ready to go in here with the final lines that make up Fred. I'm going to ignore little things like uh, his wrist things at the moment. This is only possible um, because of <clears throat> practice, nothing but practice. People that know me know that I'm kind of big on that. Listen to those crying dicks. They're all dicker rolling right now. You have to know anatomy. And um, if you're going to go into the, a business like animation, you especially need to, need to know how to streamline the figures. Take all the ins and outs of the muscles out and just go for the main cursive lines, which is what I'm trying to show you here. Sometimes I like to break up the joints like this so I'm, I'm aware of... <clears throat> exactly where uh, I'm going to be putting in a new form. I was just looking at, the, at feet today um, at the gym. I almost got arrested, but it's okay. There's a thickness here where the bones come together. I think it's the tibia and whatever the hell it is. I don't know. It's been a while, guys. Uh, we definitely want to give him a thin waist because all super guys are incredibly fit. So rather than going in like this, like a lot of people might do, and put individual things down, I'm putting in the entire thing down first in a, in a series of sweeping lines. And then the details can come over that. This is the soundest procedure that I know about how to draw. Hands, uh, who needs them? Well, I suppose we gotta, we got to bite it here. And, uh, hands are hard mostly because, well, they're hard. Um, to think dimensionally with hands is, uh, honest to God, guys, I've been working on this for, uh, for as long as I've been drawing. And it's just nuts sometimes trying to figure out um, hands in the round. It's obvious that the reason they're hard 
is because there's so many little joints in there. The foot uh, and the toes have the same amount of carpals and divisions and uh, hinge joints as the hand. But uh, feet are looked at a little differently. They're hard enough as it is. So I'm working my, up, my way, up, way up to the head here. Okay, so he's got a sword, right? Okay, so let's do the sword. The way I'm going to do it is, is draw the sword first and have the hand come over it. Whenever Mr. Producer's around, we always have the, uh, the household dicks going mental. And the dick rolling begins. So there's our hand. Remember we talked about hands last time? There, there's your base, the wedge, and the things that come out of it. It's got a curve to it from the front view. So it looks kind of like that. The, um, the thumb hangs at the, at the very side. And the fingers extend at, actually at a point there. That's where the skeleton starts with the fingers. Okay. So we've got Fred's hand, and we're going to put a sword in there, okay? With some luck, it'll, it'll, I'll be able to pull it off. If you guys have never thought dimensionally before, <clears throat> that is the literal secret of drawing. He's got a short sword, like as with the Romans. <clears throat> okay, he's got that symbol right here, the hammer. It's slightly slanted. This uh, 12 field animation paper that you see here is uh, very smooth, and that's how we're able to get a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, smoothness of the pencil lines, extend his muzzle because he's an ape. Animal. The dicks always want to get in on the hand. He's got sideburns, if you want to call him that. Let's, let's give him a happy face. He's having a nice day today. Put the ears in. The ears, you got to know how the ears sit on the side of the head. And then you have to know, uh, what do you have to know? You have, you have to know the, the simple anatomy that comes about from these simple things. He's a little hunched up, so I'm going to bring his neck down a little bit. And then all the details can come in. You know, his, um, his armor, based on Roman armor, because uh, that's what he bases himself on, ancient earth, even though he's not from earth. And he's got, he's got the, uh, the, the uh, metal loin thing going on here, and, uh, and he's got the scabbard. Well, I'm glad I remembered that word. For the sword, and it actually straps on. It could be man magnetically magnetically strapped on, or it could be literally strapped on with something that extends from the belt, which is right here. He's got he's got his little symbol down there, which we haven't finished yet. So how fun does this look, guys? Because if it looks fun, it is fun. And the more practice you have, the funner it gets. A few more accoutrements in the army here and the armor here. Fred is not part of the army. I suppose we have to put in our the soles of our shoes here. These are also metal. I always have trouble with these skinny parts here. So there, in all his glory, is Fred Judah Maccabee. Do we want to? Do we want to put in some of the blacks? Well, why not? Anything to hold an audience. So, how's your day going, guys? Let's hear from you. We had someone tune in from uh, France named Vincent. He said it's ten thirty p.m. there in France. Aha! Uh -huh. Did you hear that, guys? Ten thirty p.m. in France. Okay. What I'll say. 
we can add some tones if we want to show off a little bit. Anyway, um, study the way metal reflects uh, because it's only it has to reflect what's around it. If it's if it's not around it, it won't reflect it. So keep that in mind when you're uh, doing something uh, like armor and reflections. But try to study it uh, uh, a little more than a simple passing kind of a, a notice, because it's uh, you're going to be any illustrator is going to be drawing these for the rest of his life. <clears throat> so it's best, it's always best to, to really get to know these things and make it a practice to get to know these things <clears throat> for your entire career. Fred is done. I hear Fred applause. Oh, very good. Thank you, Fred. You're welcome, Fred. And we're going to move this drawing off. <clears throat> and we are going to, sorry, Fred. <clears throat> Let's work on, let's work on this guy right here. The four-armed quattro, Creed. See, Creed is huge. See that, guys? Of course you do. Grab some of my 12-field paper, my beloved 12-field paper. Tape it up just to keep it steady. There, it's steady. We got a comment that says, went to the comic book store today with my two-year-old and was depressed at the horrific state of mainstream comics. Uh -huh. Guys hearing this? Is that it? Well, that sums it up, doesn't it? <clears throat> Someone's, someone walked in <clears throat> to get a, um, a comic at a comic book store and was appalled at the state of the, the, um, the, the industry by what they're putting out nowadays. Let me tell you folks, if you had grown up in the 50s, I mean the 60s, and even if you hadn't, I would take a 15 cent or 12 cent comic book over the billion dollar movies we're making of these characters of Marvel right now. And you can take that to the bank. <clears throat> okay, Creed. Where's our blue pencil here? This is going to be our blue pencil. So we don't want to duplicate ourselves here, so it's not like we're, um, we're rock stars where we have to sing the same song for the next 40 years. We can always do something new. Let's see. <clears throat> so you see I'm working out the gesture in my mind. You see how simple it is, right? Um, I want the head to be very forward. Just because that, as part of the gesture, this looks good. Are these forearms going to be a problem, Steve? Well, let's find out, Steve. Get, get his head down first before you start do, going into the, the cloak and the hood and all that kind of stuff. There, he's looking at you. Because <clears throat> we're artists and we can do anything. Person tuning in from France is asking a question and says, "What's the most difficult character you had to draw in a comic book created either by you or other artists?" Um, I don't really look at things as far, like that way. When you're uh, when you're an artist, you you uh, you take what you're given and you make the best of it. But I can't think of anything um, that was uh, any harder than the rest of them. <clears throat> It's all drawing. It's all it's all basic form, and it's part of it's part of what you do uh, uh, that you've trained yourself to do for uh, your whole life. Another commenter said, "I read your Nexus slash Madman crossover today." Yeah, that was done. Uh, <clears throat> funny story about the Nexus Madman thing. Um, <clears throat> Baron wrote it. Um, um, Mike already changed it. Um, I drew it, and I inked it too. Um, there's some. There's a lot of in jokes going on in the Nexus Madman book, uh, which of which we are very proud. I don't know what to do with this other arm here. 
but we'll figure it out. See, that's that's as literally as as soft as I'm going to get with this stuff right here. Looks like he's doing the Macarena. Uh, hands. We talked about hands. We'll always be talking about hands. Um, remember to think dimensionally, guys. Think basic, basic, basic. Because that's how uh, all of us are. Just bail ourselves out of things that are, that are hopelessly complex. <clears throat> Is by remembering that these things all have all can all can break be broken down to basic shapes. I think his mouth is up a little too high. So for that, we invented the eraser. Just for this live stream. Let's open up his mouth. Which means he's probably saying something. You guys supply the line. I'll just draw it. Remember, the mouth has a shape like this from the top, guys, and that's all part of thinking dimensionally that I keep bringing up to you all, to you all out there. <clears throat> Feet, uh, when I'm animating, when I'm learning how to animate, I discovered this very basic secret, and that is um, fleet, feet stay planted on the floor. <laughs> And if you're going to make somebody move, remember that the feet are the are the thing that propels it. The legs and the feet it starts for the feet because they're they're bonded to the ground. Let's do our little shade and number here to show that. So, and let's get serious about the anatomy here. A lot is a lot is mentioned about the anatomy that we have to learn. Well, it's true. It's just another thing that we uh, were responsible for uh, working at and learning in order to get good. And I know, I know what you're thinking. All of you want to get good, so <clears throat> there's a secret right there. <clears throat> so let's. Uh, <clears throat> this is why the model sheet comes in handy, in case I forget how to draw my own characters. He's got massive thighs. So, by the way, this is something I learned in, in the Calabasas School a long time ago in the 90s. Uh, this is called line one and line two. Um, that's important. Line one and line two and the distance between them show you how thick or thin something is. This is line one, this is line two. It's a lot thinner than this line one and this line two. This is a thinner line one, line two. This is thicker. You guys get what I'm talking about? You're just that smart. In anatomy, boy, um, <clears throat> nobody wants to omit learning anatomy. Um, what are some of the things people are reluctant to learn that you cannot go forward until you do? One of them is, one of them is perspective. The other is um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what the other one is. I think they're both perspectives. But you see the way I, <clears throat> this is the way I've trained myself and, and been trained through all the study that I've done. <clears throat> this is the arm right here. That's the way it starts out, okay? And then you modify that. Actually, that's the wrong place for another arm to come out. But uh, hey, license, right? This is animation. He's moving his arm in a different way. There you go. Okay, so... <clears throat> But you see the way I'm doing this, right? These are all joints. Joint here. Um, this is one long bone. Let's see. What, what do I want to do with a hand here? First of all, I'm, I'm going to block it off the wrist so I know how long the wrist is going to is going to be. And looks like I'm getting carried away with this blue pencil stuff here. I don't know if we'll get around to a black one. Sorry, that sounds racist. <clears throat> um, first, I'm going to block in um, the wedge, okay? And when I'm th when I'm drawing this thumb, I'm thinking of it dimensionally. See, here's here's what's going on. This is the view you're seeing. 
But there's also that view, there's this view, there's this view, and there's that view. And these are things that everybody, if you want to be good, and not to be just, just to be another ordinary artist, which I know none of you do, I know you're all going to work hard to become something uh, extraordinary. Because that's what you have to uh, strive for, guys. You know that. Um, when, when you're, I don't, like, I don't like to really use the word competing. But in essence, that's what, we're, that's what you're doing. You're competing with guys <clears throat> that if they're better than you, they're going to get uh, the notice. Got a comment from Sandy B. He says, hey there, I'm new to your channel, but I find I'm really into your classic comic style. I love the clarity and appeal of the shapes, and it makes me want to learn from it. Now, then that's that's what I call an eager beaver right there. Obviously, Andy is going to be going to the top of the heap within the next five minutes, easily. Yeah, classic. Classic is what I'm all about. That's that's those are my um, that's my sense of what I wanted to do as an artist. Everyone has their um, their preferences. Mine. Um, hey, you know, I'm going to show you a book right here. Okay, you just hang in there, guys. Whoa! Okay, you talk about classic. This is more classic than you can shake a dick at. Cat, I mean, sorry. <clears throat> um, this is the work of Hal Foster. This strip was started, I believe, in the 1930s. And <clears throat> let me show you what this guy is all about here, okay? <laughs> I'm going to get to a page that, um, well, there's Hal, there's Hal right there. Getting an award from Janet uh, Lee, who starred in Psycho. Isn't there a big thing that I'm looking for here that I, ha that I can't find? Well, that would be typical, wouldn't it? Here is, um, <clears throat> these are all taken from the original. So for guys like me and guys like you that are interested in classic, classically trained artists, <clears throat> Guys that make things look real and not super exaggerated, which seems to be the style of the last 20 years. This is the ultimate classicist right here. Now just check this stuff out, guys. I'll turn the pages very slowly. The detail in this is absolutely bonkers. And this is the size of it, the size of this reproduction right here, taken from the originals. This is uh probably half the size of the original uh, paper size that he worked. Can you believe that? His, his, um, his, his single Sunday strip would take up more than this entire board right here. You see how big this is, how long that is. He uh, preferred to do that because of the detail that he had to incorporate in the incredible amount of research that alone would kill most people. But he, um, here's a guy, let's just call it what it is. He knew how to draw everything, literally everything. He was a guy that inspired um, guys that we've covered in the past, like Jack Kirby. And look at all the nice white space here. He doesn't overwhelm everything with detail, detail, detail. There is an actual path, an eye path that he's well aware of, um, as well as uh, leaving room for color. That is very evident in these pages right here. Where's that gigantic? Oh, I know it's in a different book. <clears throat> Let's go to the sexy stuff here. Here's uh, Lita. That's his, um, that's his love interest here. There she is. Isn't that her? Yeah, that's her. Okay. Everyone needs a love interest. That's Prince Valentine's, a beautiful blonde named Alita. These stories are so compelling <clears throat> that people like Ray Bradbury would write in and tell them how excited they were to see what was going to happen next week. This was only a Sunday strip. Uh, can you imagine trying to do this as a daily strip? Neither can I. Um, but that's, uh, that's, a little, that's a little glimpse at what I consider uh, the, literally, the literal best drawn and written comic strip ever done. And remember that, remember that comic books came from comic strips. That's one of the reasons you see me talking about the work I'm doing in Nexus. 
is not a comic book. It is a comic strip. <clears throat> and I intend to keep it that way because it's something different. <clears throat> so you can see the you can see everything that's going on here, right? There's no <clears throat> there's no obfuscation, there's no <clears throat> there's no whatever. It's simple stuff. But as you know, simple is the last thing to be understood. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put these little um <clears throat> Uh, these little leather uh, stripes, leather, whatever they're called. Um, I am, am I thinking dimensionally as I do this? Yes, I am. These, uh, these, these boots that he's got, are, are, they have a lot of appeal to me. They're just fun to look at. Ooh, let's see. So he's got these black wristbands, and he's got this thumb thing going on. That connects to the middle finger here. <clears throat> I like to think practical when I'm doing these things. <clears throat> and by God, practical is what we're going to get. Here you can see from the top, the top view here. Um, if I can figure this out, how it works on the hand. <clears throat> Let's block that in right there. <clears throat> You'll, always, you'll also see me using the side of the pencil a lot. Uh, that's another part of, uh, of the training of illustrators. Good, I don't, I don't have to draw that symbol on his, on, on his uh, belly there. I'm glad to have got away with that. So let's, uh, <clears throat> this, um, this top piece that he's got, very interesting. Well, I designed it that it better be. I'm not going to go around things like these little uh, rivets here. They're going to be part of uh, um, how I construct this, uh, construct the big to the little stuff. Um, he's got belly fat. You see? Oh, you know that rule with Disney's always talking about, right? A straight versus that kind of thing. If you don't know it, look it up. It's cool. You'll never forget it. So anyway, uh, drawing like this, uh, you'll see a lot of guys drawing, holding the pencil like this. It's either this or this. And this way you tend to use your whole arm <clears throat> rather than uh, just your wrist. See, that's the difference. <clears throat> He's got pecs. And there they are. We're going to delineate a few muscle groups here. <clears throat> now you see how well the side of the pencil uh, gets the point across. We have a commenter who says, you have very good posture on your drawing table. Very smart not to lean in too much. Everyone talks about the art, but never about to not destroy your body. <laughs> I love that one. Hey, thanks for the comment. That's really good. Um, <clears throat> I keep good posture because if you don't, you look like a wimp and you're going to hurt your back. Do I have to do another hand here? Eh, help me out, guys. What should this hand be? Well, first, it's got to have that wedge thing going on, right? And it's got to have this dimension to it. You see? You see what's going on there, guys? The wrist is going to go up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> there was a guy that taught me these, these great tricks about... Uh, essentially rubber hosing things at the first at the first time like this arm would be like that and the hand would be like that and then you can go in once you've got the, the flowing gesture down and then you can start adding um, the things that make it uh, the construction that makes it look like what it's supposed to look like so so far oh, so good remember where the um, Remember these uh, dimensions right here in the hand. Um, I'm keeping the shape very simple. And I'm also keeping them in perspective. Yeah, hands and everything else in here have a sense of perspective to them. Guy doesn't seem to have fingernails, so I got away with doing that. Okay. And then things go over this, back to the side of the pencil. 
I'm still going to ask if we have any people watching from Tasmania because I'm really big on visiting there. Uh, I want to see my friends, the Tasmanian wolf, <clears throat> echidnas, and those platypuses with the uh, dangerous spur on the end of their feet. Uh, let's put the hood on, and we're going to be we're going to be done. <clears throat> I always love it when I see stuff in animation that that's considered rough. Of course, they spell it. R U F F because they're lazy. Uh, when I get into animation, it's going to be spelled out the right way. Uh, R U F. So this thing right here, the way it works, I I know that it. Well, good thing for these side views, huh? I was about to commit a drastic error by not even looking at my own sheets here. Let's block in the hood here. You see what I mean, guys? Front view, side, three quarters back, complete back. All of this helps. Oh, you know what? He's got this. Uh, he's got this brow thing going on there. Otherwise, he looks too nice. How does that phrase go? He'd kill you as soon as look at you. Whatever that means. Um, so there is Creed, Creed the what? Creed the Gucci trained assassin. You saw how I did it. You saw how fundamental everything starts out. That's important. And we're going to remove Creed from the premises and go on to, um, the characters that you've all been waiting for. The beautiful, the vivacious. The skin tight dress of Sandra Peel. Now, how can you not fall in love with this beautiful girl? If you guys are in the blondes like I am, of course, I married one. Always a good thing. Then you'll know the appeal of this beautiful girl right here. Sharpen the pencil. Take it out. Um, let's do, um, let's grab the. Uh, the normal color, the normal working color that a lot of animators and comic book artists use. Uh, actually, this is, I believe this to be a, just a standard trick based in common sense. Of course, it's not a trick, but um, <clears throat> a lot of us learn to think with, in construction and with the gesture, trying to get those things down that come out of our head. We see these, we see these flashes in our head, these, these semi-coherent images. And from there, um, a lot of us have used, have learned to use these, this blue pencil right here <clears throat> as our thinking tool. And then later on, uh, in the case of comic books, which I, which is what I do, um, we'll slightly erase the blue pencil. And then we'll go over it with a, with a regular um, HB or uh, two, 2B or whatever lead <clears throat> and tighten it up. And from there comes... Um, from there comes the inking, which is another art form that I'm, uh, I'm determined not to see go the way of the dodo. Sundra Peel, okay, let's have her sitting. It's hard to make people sitting, so let's do that. Um, okay, so I have to get this thing in my mind first. Let me look at this paper, and let's do something really hard that I'm barely capable of doing on my own. Um, this is the gesture lines right here. I'm trying to get, before I'm going to do the mannequin, <clears throat> you know, fill in the basic forms, I'm going to do um, the gesture lines. And once I get something that I think looks okay, always a challenge, then I'll proceed to do, um, <clears throat> to do a more formalized Figure construction of Sunny Sundra Sunny Peel. We have a question about the way that that Kirby would draw his pages. Okay. He says we have a Kirby question here. Always good. He says if Kirby didn't lay out anything, he started at the top left and finished at the bottom right of a page. Then he would create a panel size 
and then about the process. I'd be curious about the process. Well, uh, it sounds like you got the process down as good as I know it. <clears throat> uh, obviously, this is not the standard working practice of, of normal mortals here, of which you, uh, we all are. Thunderpeel is um, going to require a little more fastidiousness. I haven't used that word more than a long time to make sure I'm getting everything uh, as good as I can make it. She's kind of get, kind of uh, small on the page here. I didn't think she'd be that small. <clears throat> well, we'll try to live with it. So, <clears throat> if I get this down and I think it's okay, I'm going to just move in closer and closer <clears throat> and establish. Um, what I have to, to flesh out this figure right here. Good questions, guys. We have another one that is saying, I know, you, I know you like these artists, so did you ever draw Kirby's characters like Lancelot Strong, The Fly, or Bullseye? And it says, uh, Western one, not modern Marvel one. Or it tells Eclipto or Vanguard. Have I ever drawn those? <clears throat> well, I've drawn uh, the Kirby characters many, many times. Um, the only book I never got a chance to work on due to um, the brilliance of the DC staff was uh, a, a New Gods book. <clears throat> that was going to be a lot of fun, but they, uh, they, they had to decide um, <clears throat> things like what kind of paper it would be printed on, and uh, I think that was it. Um, how, how am I going to do this hand right here? Well, I don't know. So let's look at the hand. Okay. I kind of sort of know. Don't think this is not a challenge, folks, because it is. Standard Loomis head proportions here. But honestly, I really have to look at these carefully to make sure they're they're actually working. Uh, the way that I need them to. Someone's asking, uh, do you white box on your Bristol board or go straight to inks? Uh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> we're getting some good ones this time around. When I was just starting out drawing comics, specifically with Nexus, I would light box something that, that I drew on tracing paper and uh, in, in, uh, <clears throat> tighten up things from there with a, with a normal HB, 2H lead, <clears throat> 3B, whatever. All those numbers, that confuse me. Um, <clears throat> but eventually, uh, with, I, presumably with a, <clears throat> a little experience and, and getting comfortable with a process, um, I stopped doing that. I, what I do now is I, go, is I go directly on the board with a pencil like this. And then when I get things fleshed out, I will, to my satisfaction, and everything looks good. Because remember, everything, everything starts out like this right here. Um, then I'll go directly with this blue pencil, um, get everything down the way I want it, within the page and the panels that make up the page. And then I kind of erase this pencil a little bit right here, just to get rid of, a, uh, you know, distracting lines. And then I'll go in with that other darker regular lead and take it from there. Um, head construction, uh, how easy is it? Well, I don't think it's easy at all. Um, and it's funny because I think a lot of artists might, might tell you this, which is uh, kind of strange in itself, but um, it never seems to get a lot easier. And that makes no sense at all. And now I'm going to go in here. and carefully construct what I think is the right proportions for a sunder peel, our beautiful 
female heron, heroine. She's not a heron. Alex Soltz would, would always talk about doing females. And it, um, it was always tough for him because he knew that one stray line, and this is true, can change the entire, um, <clears throat> the entire expression of um, a pretty female. And I'm going to change that mouth. It looks like she's saying something, but I don't want her to say anything, so I'm just going to close her mouth. Artists can do this kind of stuff. We have a question asking, one second. Besides, uh, besides Hanna-Barbera cartoons like Space Ghost, what are some of your other favorite examples of animation? Well, um, <laughs> um, why am I laughing? Because <clears throat> when it comes to Japanese a animation, Everybody in Aunt Harriet's dog has told me, well, I know you don't like Japanese animation, Steve, but why do you see this one? Well, it's never worked. Um, my tastes are firm, firmly rooted in what I grew up in. Um, and thank God I grew up when I did, because I can't imagine a life without those strong influences. Um, uh, all, the, all, the, uh, all the animators out there and what they do is is to be commended. It's incredibly difficult uh, um, work that uh, is fairly unsung, especially in Japan, where they they aren't treated a, a whole lot and they don't get paid very well. Um, and that's probably why they send everything overseas in America now and have for a long time. But yeah, that's. Um, Okay, her lipstick is too strong. I'm going to have to get my point back again, which is probably going to break. You guys know how hard it is to do smiles? Well, don't take my word for it. Get out your smile book and look into it, and you'll see. But the secret to... Um, Something like this, her face is is precise proportions. Anything that's off will will it will look like her. Um, there was a time when um, here's a little personal secret of the of the uh, the stuff I go through to get to hopefully improve. Um, I drew a thousand heads. By the time I realized, I didn't really know him that well. So for me, it, it, the solution is very simple. You just go back to basics. <laughs> you study basics. And you reacquaint yourself with them. And, uh, and you're good for a while. And then you forget them again. I was talking with uh, Terry Austin about this. He thought that was pretty funny that I would, I would, I would bring this kind of stuff up. Let's see what she looks like with her eyes. Uh, it's a so-so kind of event here. Um, draw the back of the head before you put the hair on. I think these pencils specialize in breaking. It's in the contract. So here's her hair. Her banana peels, as they tend to look like. Blasty's breaking lids. Well, that eye is a little is a little confused there. So let's uh, let's redo it. Um, coming up uh, in these live streams is going to be uh, uh, something again, that I, I think is pretty unique, and that is <clears throat> we're going to talk about things that most people get wrong when they're drawing stuff. <sighs> One example is the eyes. Comic book artists in particular, and obviously animators with their cartoon characters, <clears throat> get used to drawing eyes that are just too big. Uh, they're not as big as you think they are. 
These are actually fairly big right here. But you've all seen people that have really big eyes, and it looks, it looks a little funny sometimes. Draw through if you value your life. And um, uh, here come those bloody hands. Okay, how are those? Okay. We have to do some mental projection here, people. Always a fun thing to do in front of a crowd. I actually learned at some point to do that mental projection. But it's 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 all based on fundamentals, as always. I want someone asking if they're fans of Rush Prince or Trace. You can get artists about <coughs> making sure the drawing, the figures, don't look stiff or rigid. Well, that's an easy one. I think I brought this up. In fact, I know I brought this up when I was doing the Alex Toth uh, figure drawing breakdown. The story goes something like this. 1984 San Diego comic book convention when it was still fun. And uh, <clears throat> I happened to see Alex walking around, Alex Toth. I said, Alex, uh, I need your help in something. Can you, can you come over to my table? So he did. And I said, um, I said, tell me what you think about this drawing. That I just that I did in my sketchbook. He looked at it and says, "If you don't have it there, you don't have it at all." And what he was what he was pointing to was something that was very gesturized. It was very simple. It wasn't a finished drawing, but it had uh, a you know unfinished gesture sense to it. <clears throat> um, and it's very clear what he meant at the time he told me that because I understood it right away. If the gesture is stiff. Um, <clears throat> Then don't keep going forward when you know it's uh, when you uh, you know do these the following steps after the gesture the ni nice natural gesture drawing <clears throat> it's not going to look any better. So <clears throat> that's how you that's how you avoid getting something stiff. Stiff is a, is a word that. Uh, these uh, these editors always throw around. It's a little stiff, Steve. It's a little stiff. You see how stiff it is? Um, I suppose. <clears throat> I got some very valuable advice um, in the late 1970s. I think it was 70, 70, I think 1980. Um, I would go up to, I was in my early 20s, and I would go, I would, I would work at a job, save up every cent I had, and spend it on getting to New York and uh, meeting the people that uh, did my favorite comics. And that's what I did. Um, um, the guy that uh, I was so, that I was very big on at the time was uh, the great uh, master of Kung Fu artist, Paul Galassi, a guy that I still think is entirely unsung. By the way, when I do this uh, this foot right here, um, remember what the foot looks like before the shoes are added in. There's that, there's that big sweeping curve, there's the instep, there's the heel, and then there's, and then there's uh, the actual, uh, that part of the foot. Are we getting tired? Okay, let's put some cast shadows on here. I think that's a, that's a reasonably reasonably okay drawing of Sunder Peel. Um, if I was doing this for real, I'd have to. Uh, uh, what would I have to do, Steve? Well, for one thing, I'd have to I'd have to uh, look at it very carefully. Get the mirror out. Where's the mirror? The mirror's not here. Well, the mirror's not here. But if I did have one. The mirror, I would just hold it up like this and look at it in reverse, and that's when you can spark, spark uh, see all your flaws.
So how does one do this out of their head? How is it possible for the memory alone to construct a figure that isn't something you look at as a magazine clipping or whatever? How is it possible? Well, that's a really good question. And uh, I'll answer it like this. Your brain is an incredible tool. Is that, is that a um, mirror? So let's look at thunder peel here. It's not bad. Not bad. I think she needs a little more sway up here. You see animators doing this all the time. They're never happy. And neither are, neither are, are, are us comic book types. And that's, that's part of what, if you want to add, you know, some likewise shadows to her face, um, in comic books, these would be black. Or if you want to half tone them, uh, you do this feather and stuff, or you just kind of do a dry brush thing that kind of looks like, kind of ends up looking like that. How's that hand looking? Well, it's pretty ridiculous. But like sunset prunes, we keep marching on. We have a question that says, because of computer inking seems to become a lost art, I can still see you do it. Do you have any favorite inkers? Well, um, <clears throat> uh, rather than going to inker preference, let me just say that uh, um, anytime some new technology comes around, there's going to be changes. That's just the way it works. Are we happy about it? Doesn't matter. <clears throat> um, all I can tell you is that I'm going to stay true to my roots and do what I like to do and have the most fun doing <clears throat> and carry on the traditions of yesteryear uh, when everything was uh, hand drawn with a pencil on paper and ink with a brush and a pen nib. This is one of literally a thousand different poses here that I could do with, with Sundra. Someone liked the logo on the mirror. It said logo mirror. Oh, yeah, right. There's my little SR that I've had since um, since the sixth grade. Um, so there's my Sundra peel. I don't happen to think it's a very good representation of um, basically the the gesture, the pose. So we're going to try another one. I hope that's okay. Any objections? State them now or forever hold your, your tongue. Hmm. You guys want to try another one? All right, you talked me into it. Let's get out this big fat blue pencil again and <clears throat> let's do a, let's try to get something down that I'm actually happy with. Because normally, if I'm happy with it, other people will be too. How to study and practice to become a comic artist? A comic artist. Most, most books explain to you, but they don't actually show you how to draw comics. Well, if they're if they're if they're going to explain it and they don't show you, that's um, that's not doing a great service to the artistic mind. Um, whenever I'm around people, uh, namely the girl I married, she tries to explain things to me doesn't work. I say, Gino, you know, just show me a picture, then I'll get it. So artists need to be shown things. And that's obviously um, the importance of these live streams, uh, directly showing you how it's done. And uh, even more important, explain to you how I learned to do it in the first place. We're getting real sticky down here. Uh, let's see. As we're starting to fade with our energy here, despite that energy drink. Oh, we just passed an hour. You guys still hanging in there? Oh, and by the way, if you hang in there long enough, even longer than you are already, we're going to be giving, we're going to be doing an art giveaway. Now, what that is, is yet to be determined, but uh, hang in there and we'll find out what it is. Uh, let's do a, uh, let's do a larger drawing here, okay? Now, I, I already see something in my mind. Sometimes, normally these these come very quickly. And I, I you know, that's something that, uh, I don't know if it can be really explained uh, how that uh, how that occurs. But, um, you know, we're talking the human brain here. Let's get this gesture right first.
let's push that gesture even farther. So I'm going to erase some of this right here, wisely so. This pose actually starts at, um, at the feet. It comes up like this. You see how I'm going to change it? This gesture is going to go way forward because I think it's going to make a much better drawing. There. Is her head up or is it down? Oh, we can make it really down if we want. See how the options are, uh, are endless here. Let's, uh, let's do something really crazy and just put her head way down here. She's being funny today. She's, being, she's doing something goofy. Make sure the head is proportionate to um, the, rest of the, the rest of the forms of the body. See, this is what awaits you if you practice hard, guys. I mean, drawing and art is supposed to be fun. A lot of people forget that, especially when you're, you have jobs that are, that are all about deadlines. Um, we all know that the, that the industry should be, be deadline-oriented. Uh, as, um, as everyone working in comics today has seemingly forgot. Boy, the, the, the times they have so changed. If guys from the, uh, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, and some of the 70s before the hippies moved in, tried to uh, not make it a, a, uh, a publication date, uh, you be crucified. Now it's it's uh, standard practice. Someone just bought the next Nexus How to Draw book. Did you hear that, guys? Now, how, how cool can some of these people be? While we are drawing from the How to Draw Nexus book, we actually, guy, we actually had a guy that ordered the How to Draw Nexus book. Kudos and bravo to this exceptional fan here. Let's have her legs come a little forward. <clears throat> I think this is really important that I'm doing this other drawing of Sundra Peel. You can see how I'm really how the the process, the reality of this process is coming across here. <clears throat> um, no, I, I drew her head like this, but <clears throat> for me to get orientated properly, I'm going to. First draw it the way it's going to look from this angle, and then I'm going to move it this way. And uh, properly orient, orient myself with uh, proper proportions here. I hear a giant blowhard coming up the steps. I think you can hear her now, too. You can hear her. So you can see everything's being constructed here. Uh, that is vital. Hello, Bigness. May I help you? Or may I not, not help you? There's no milk bones up here. Go away. Um, this construction stuff is the secret of all drawing. And I don't care how many times I've drawn her. <clears throat> Doesn't matter. Now what kind of a look? Her eyes are going to be a big one here. Uh, bigness here is going to entertain us with sound effects in the meantime. Uh, let's see what what is she? What what's the look in her eyes that I want? Kind of a squint. She's kind of smiling. So let's bring the uh, the lower lids up. And get to, you know very very carefully construct her head to make sure it's going to work out. So from here, I think we can zoom in for a a, a kill, so to speak. All right, you guys talked me into it. Let's. Um, everything has got to be thought of dimensionally. 
See, I'm not drawing strands of hair yet. I'm drawing the, the overall basic thing. Uh, let's have her hair coming around her head like that. I always like it when girls do that. So all this memorization, uh, this incredible process of using your brain. <clears throat> let's see if the lead's going to break now. Um, if you can learn to draw females with um, with a great deal of um, assurance, then you can, just think about it. You can have your dream girl come to life before your eyes. Hands. I have to do more hands. That's why you practice, guys. I'm keeping in mind the, the whole effect of the hand uh, as I go in there. <clears throat> Let's keep the wedge, the wedge, and everything else um, proper, uh, proper hand positions here. Uh, this is construction, guys. It's all construction, as you can see. Oh, she's got, she's gaining some weight there. I think she's highly offended by that. It kind of goes like this, okay? Let's, let's draw through that because that's the way it's supposed to be uh, uh, constructed. And now I have to go up to her head, <clears throat> make sure it's done with some sense of... Uh, some sense of something. Someone named Chuck is saying, why when I draw figures, I draw it too fast? Is it because a lack of knowledge of, uh, is it a lack of knowledge of drawing the figure? He's asking. Um, um, when he draws the figures, he draws it too fast. Um, slow down. No charge. Okay, we seem to have pulled off the head okay, much better than last time. Make sure the ears are proportionate. The humming does no charge as well. Where does the where does the hair start? Well. Don't forget to get that, that entire head down first because the hair rests over the entirety of um, something. I'm starting to lose my train of thought. That happens when you're working and stuff for too long. I used to go to workshops with uh, uh, great artists and you can always tell when they're, they're starting to... <laughs> When they're trying to work too hard, they're using two parts of their brain, the right and the left side, those darn sides. I'll turn this right side up so you can see how her head looks. Um, you know what? I don't want the, I don't want it like that. Uh, it's supposed to come around, and then there's her neck. Yeah, the hair is coming around and it's kind of coming from the back and going like that. Drawing is more successful, so I'm not uh, terribly embarrassed. She's got this unit right here on her pants. That's um, where she sticks her phasers and other instruments and accoutrements that she's in dire need of as she goes on mission. Because remember, she is a Marine, a trained Marine. Um, uh, let's see. It looks like we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up pretty soon. It, it is now at the uh, hour mark. Not hour. Hour. And let me pick a little bit more here before we um, 
we move into um, <clears throat> raffle territory. <clears throat> We're going to give away a drawing that um, that I've done to uh, one of the listeners out there. And um, <clears throat> this video is made possible by Patreon. So thanks you thanks to you Patreon members here. Um, we've got some original art to give away to one of the Patreon members right here. Um, so um, we don't, I don't see a drum set here, nor do we have recorded music. So <clears throat> within this little box, within this little glass jar, these are hard to paint. Have you ever, ever noticed that? We're going to pick a number right here, okay? Here's a new one right here that is not going to a family member. 151. 151. <clears throat> I knew there was trouble when Mr. Producer started to laugh at the, that last uh, uh, number there. 151 goes to Doc Talapin. Um, is there a doctor in the house? <clears throat> Doc Talapin is the winner of the sketch. And let's show him exactly what he's won. Oh, would you look at that? <clears throat> this is going back to the Alex Toth demo that I did a couple weeks ago, showing how, much like I'm showing here, <clears throat> how I break down uh, figures. Uh, the Alex Toth way, the way everyone does it, except for Jack Kirby, because he's a genius and we're not. So congratulations, Doc. Um, can I call on you for medical advice? Um, another thing that I want to I want to mention before we go here, I know it's you don't have to cry about it, is um, we're opening up the commissions again, and that means you guys have your the ability to write in. And uh, request a whatever whatever it might be um, for me to draw for you personally. This is how this is how we support ourselves. This is how we keep the air conditioning on and, and the pool clean in the backyard, and all the other pe uh, people uh, and uh, maids and uh, butlers and the roles that we keep in the garage of, uh, uh, working. Okay, keeping it fluid. So anyway, congratulations to Doc. <clears throat> I think it's going to wrap it up for now. Let's get a, uh, a nice tight shot of center peel here because I think this one actually works. Ah, and before we do that, the final touch. Those darn mouths. They have to be very, very simple and because they, they can be very simple. So there is my gesture of Sunder Peel uh, doing something um, out of character or maybe in character. She's a pretty funny girl sometimes. I'm going to sign it. That's the hard part, signing the, signing the drawing. Steve Rude, um, September um, 8th? 7th. 7th, of course, I knew that. Uh, 2024. So when this when this video appears in the next millennium, you'll know exactly when it was done. Uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll be doing these regular regularly on Saturday. So at 1:30 my time here, <clears throat> you'll be well alerted ahead of time uh, as to when I uh, what the subject matter is going to be, um, and uh, we're going to be doing another another drawing giveaway to. Uh, to somebody out there that uh, is tuning in, uh, which is always appreciated. Um, that's it for now, guys. Let's uh, let's meet here next week, Saturday at 1.30. Same bad time, same bad channel. Adios. Bye-bye.